We're going to do another numerical estimate uh, for our uh, ideal gas. So here we would like to estimate the mean free path. So first of all, uh, what is the mean free path? It is the average distance a molecule travels uh, before it hits another molecule. before it collides with another molecule. This is called mean pre-path. Okay, so in order to calculate the uh, mean free path or estimate the mean free path, I have to decide under what conditions am I going to get a collusion and under what conditions am I not going to get a collusion. So I'm assuming that uh, uh, the molecules are spherical hard spheres. Okay, so uh, I'm modeling my molecules as hard spheres and radius of each molecule is a remember normally we neglect this a in our kinetic theory because the molecules are point or point like particles in our treatment but here because i'm considering the collisions between molecules i have to consider the dimensions of the molecules so i'm modeling them as uh, hard spheres with radius a and let's say that uh, the molecule a is uh, moving that is with velocity v molecule a prime is stationary and if you look at the center to center distance b i call the center to center distance so for molecules A and A prime, uh, the, the red dots show me the, where the center is. So I look at the distance between the red dots, that's B. And then I have the radii of the two molecules, both are A because remember our molecules are identical in our uh, kinetic theory treatment. Okay, so when are we going to have a collusion? Uh, it's quite simple to see that if uh, we have B, the center to center distance is greater than 2A, there will be no collusion. There will be no overlap <coughs> between the molecules uh, as they pass by. Well, here I'm assuming A prime is stationary. A is moving towards uh, A prime with velocity uh, V and um, it's going to pass uh, a prime if the center to center distance is greater than uh, 2a the centers will be separated by a distance more than twice the radii so there will be no collusion and if the center to center distance b is less than 2a what will happen there will be a collusion and co it will be a collusion with a large uh, instantaneous forces developing uh, during the collusion and the collusion will be elastic remember this is our assumption in uh, kinetic theory okay so uh, basically I have found the condition uh, if B is greater than 2a no collusion center to center distance is less than twice the radii then there will be a collusion Another way to say this is assume that A carries with it an imaginary disk of radius 2A. Okay, so here is A, uh, the, the radius A, and here's another A. So this is uh, total radius 2A. So I'm assuming that there is a disk that uh, this is carrying with it, 
with radius 2a and therefore uh, in a length scale L this is going to be becoming a cylindrical region okay so uh, molecule A carries an imaginary disk imaginary disk uh, of radius 2a okay now uh, there is a volume swept by this uh, disk and the collusion will occur if a prime lies within the volume swept by a so let's calculate what is the volume swept by a uh, first of all the area of this uh, disk this area area is called uh, sigma uh, sigma is pi r squared so it's pi 2 a squared so it's 4 pi a squared and it is called a uh, total scattering cross-section So if I want to calculate uh, the volume swept by this uh, molecule as it travels uh, between uh, this initial point and this final point, uh, it's going to be equal to uh, the volume swept will be equal to the volume of the cylinder sigma times L and L is what I call the mean pre-path. Okay, so if within this volume I find that there is one uh, molecule. So you can see that uh, by definition uh, half of molecule A is uh, already within this uh, volume. Um, and I look at uh, how much of A prime is within this volume. If it is more than half of it uh, that's contained in this volume that will be equivalent to saying B is less than 2A so there will be a collision with uh, the forces so remember I'm looking at uh, the distance between uh, this center and this center and that's what I called uh, B right so if B is less than 2A there will be a collision now, uh, if B is exactly equal to 2A, that's, we are just going to have a collusion, okay? So, uh, critical uh, B equals to 2A, critical B value, implies that the number of molecules inside this volume, sigma times L, times the number of molecules per volume, the number density, is equal to one. So it's the same thing. B is equal to 2A or the, uh, the number per volume multiplied by the volume of this uh, imaginary cylinder is 1. So that means I have half of A inside this volume, half of A prime inside this volume initially and A prime I assume to be stationary remember. So it's A is going to start moving and there will be a collusion if uh, the number of molecules inside this volume is 1 or B is equal to 2A. So there will just be a collusion. So this implies that uh, the mean free path is approximately 1 over the number density times the total scattering cross section. So I have found uh, L, the mean free path, so I called mean free path L uh, here, and L is equal to 1 over number density times the total scattering cross-section. And let's see if this makes physical sense. 
if I decrease the number of molecules per volume, what will happen? The average distance a molecule travels uh, to hit another molecule will increase. So that makes perfect sense. I have less molecules in the same volume. The average distance between two molecules, the uh, collusion will be increasing. Uh, another uh, thing I can check is what happens if I decrease the radii of the molecules. So let's see here. If I decrease the radii, they are more point-like and it's uh, uh, less likely that there will be a collusion. So the mean free path will increase. Uh, how is A coming into play here? That is in the total scattering cross-section. Remember, total scattering cross-section is the area of the imaginary disk the molecule A is carrying with it. It's 4 pi A squared. Okay, so with this information, let's try to estimate the mean free path of nitrogen gas in the previous uh, problem. So, um, the mean free path, remember, is 1 over, or approximately can be estimated as 1 over, number density times total scattering cross-section. So in order to estimate the mean free path, I need the total scattering cross-section of nitrogen molecules. It's 4 pi a squared. So what do I take as the radius of a molecule? Well, I can estimate the radius of a molecule. Uh, it has to be of the order of uh, Bohr radius. Uh, which is 0.5 angstrom. So I have uh, two atoms here. So if I say that these two atoms are exactly uh, touching each other, uh, so to a good approximation, then I will say that the radius of a molecule uh, A is approximately one angstrom, which is 10 to minus 10 meters. Okay, so it's going to be equal to twice A0, where A0 is uh, 0.5 angstroms Bohr radius. So that's how I'm estimating the radius of a nitrogen molecule. So let's calculate this total scattering cross-section for the nitrogen molecule then. It's 4 pi A squared. If you put plug in the numbers here, this is going to be uh, roughly 12 times 10 to minus 20 uh, meter squared. Then I need to know what is the number density of uh, this nitrogen gas. For that I have to refer to the previous problem. The number density was calculated in part B of the previous problem to be 2.5 times 10 to 25 molecules per meter cube. So I use this answer 2.5 10 to 25 uh, molecules per uh, meter cube then I can estimate the mean free path to be uh, 1 over nv sigma which is 1 over 2.5 times 10 to 25 uh, times 12 10 to minus 20 so I find the mean free path is uh, 3 times 10 to minus 7 uh, meters. So that's the average distance a molecule has to travel to hit another uh, molecule. And note that uh, the mean free path that I calculated here is much greater than the radius. So 3 times 10 to minus 7 meters is much greater than 10 to minus 10 meters which is saying uh, so the molecules interact rarely the molecules uh, collide rarely let's say so that basically is one of the assumptions we had in our ideal gas so um, supporting uh, the assumption of nitrogen being 
an ideal gas. All right, so basically, this is my answer, mean free path. I have estimated to be three times 10 to minus seven uh, meters or 0.3 micrometers uh, for this problem. Okay, so let's summarize what we said. Uh, we define the distance, the average distance a molecule travels before it collides with another molecule to be mean free path, it's L. Uh, and in order to calculate this, I'm modeling these molecules at hard spheres, as hard spheres with radius A, uh, and I call the center to center distance B. So if I have molecule A moving with velocity V towards molecule A prime, which is uh, stationary here, and if they have their identical molecules with radii A each, uh, I, I can find the center to center distance B and compare it to 2A. If it is 2A, they would be just touching each other. Uh, if it is less than 2A, uh, there will be a collusion. If it's greater than 2A, there will be no collusion. Then I said that there's another way to uh, think about this, you can see if there is an imaginary disk that molecule A carries with it, with radius 2A, uh, in a distance uh, L, the mean free path, uh, there's going to be a volume swept by this disk, that's going to be uh, a cylindrical region. The volume will be the area of the disk, which I call total scattering cross-section, 4 pi A squared, multiplied by the mean free path. So it is uh, pi r square h, remember, that's the volume of the cylinder. Now, this condition that b has to be less than 2a uh, in order to have a collusion, so this condition that I have here, is equivalent to saying the total number of molecules in the volume swept by this imaginary disk has to be 1, okay? So you already have half of molecule A within this volume here. You would like to have half of molecule A prime also within this volume so that the center to center distance B will be equal to 2A. That's the critical value of B. So that is to say, if you know the number density, number of molecules per volume, multiplied by the volume of the cylinder, sigma L, this should be equal to 1. Therefore, the mean free path we can estimate to be 1 over number density times total scattering cross-section. And if we, increase the, uh, if we decrease the number density, mean free path should increase. If we decrease the radius, the mean free path should increase. So it makes physical sense. Then I applied this to the nitrogen gas in the previous problem. I estimate the radius of a molecule uh, by looking at the radius of one atom, which is approximately a Bohr radius, 0.5 angstroms, then since I have two atoms, I have estimated the radius to be one angstroms. And I calculated the total cross-section, a uh, scattering cross-section, the number density I know from the previous problem, so I substituted these values, and I found a 3 times 10 to minus 7 meters which is equal to uh, 0.3 micrometers uh, mean free path. Uh, another thing I did is to check uh, the value that I obtained uh, in comparison to the radius of the molecule that I used. It is much greater than that. So this is basically telling me that these molecules are indeed point-like particles and the collisions are going to be rare and that supports the assumption of an ideal gas uh, for the nitrogen in the previous problem.